Okay. Well, I'll see. All right. Well, it's showing 27.2 volts right now with 11 amps charging and uh, 100%. Yesterday, the power, the inverter shut off and the volts were down to 20 volts and at 86% battery capacity. That's a problem. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. All right, guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. So uh, you guys, a lot of you guys watched that last video about my batteries and did I need new, new batteries, and I upgraded. And uh, I wanted to show and see what they would do through the winter time. They've done really, really good until this last month or so. I have been getting oh, the batteries, the inverters cut off. I, I should be able to drain those batteries down to, to mid-60s before the inverter shuts off, before the voltage gets too low. But uh, the batteries, uh, the inverter started shutting off at 73%, then 75%, and then 79%, and then 83%. And then yesterday, the inverter shut off at 86% capacity, and the voltage was down to 20 volts. So I've got a bad battery in that in that stack. Let's, we're going to have to go check those things out. So on the last couple of videos, I had some really, really good comments. And I had a, had one particular individual that uh, had left a comment about uh, being off-grid and being self-sustainable. And uh, I just wanted to address a couple of those comments really quick. Being completely self-sustainable means you can completely rebuild your own batteries. And that's why he was promoting the lead-acid stuff. Um, and, and I agree with that to a point, except that probably 99.5% of most people uh, are not able to re rebuild their own batteries. They can be rebuilt. And that was my point of going with these used AGM batteries is because I, I wouldn't have done it except for the cost was so reasonable to buy them used. And they were only a couple of years old. That it made it made perfectly good sense to spend the money on a, a bigger bank and triple my capacity with an AGM, which is still a lead acid battery, but it's the glass mat, right? Uh, versus going and buying a whole new slew of lead acid batteries. So, um, <laughs> of course, whenever I'm trying to do a video, Dozer, come here, Dozer, Dozer, come here, come here, come here, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, you guys meet the the newest member of the family here. This is Dozer, and uh, he is adorable, a little puppy Rottweiler. So back to the batteries really quick. Uh, I have got to go do a test on each battery, and I had to wait until the batteries were at 100% topped off, fully charged. And then I have a load test device that will do a load test on each battery, and it will tell me if that battery is good or bad and somewhere that there's one battery that's bad and your battery bank will only perform to the level of your worst battery. So one battery is going bad progressively uh, each time as we cycle those. So let's get down there and check out those batteries. All right, guys, if you haven't seen that video, when I did this install here, I showed you guys how to make this connection and stuff, you can go back and check that out. Uh, I've got to disconnect every one of these batteries and test them individually and they're all charged up now. But i got to go turn off the power, so luckily I've got a headlamp, but I've got to disconnect the power. I'm going to go shut off all breakers for all the solar panels, so I don't have any, I don't have 4,000 watts powering, uh, blowing through here. Okay, you guys, the one downside to uh, doing all this is you really got to be paying attention to what you're doing. And uh, do your homework, guys. One of the most important things remember working with power is to shut it off before you start working on it and to shut all this off okay breakers are off a beautiful sunny day like today 4,000 watts of solar panels is putting out some serious amperage 100 amps 100 amps is enough to kill a guy all right, so now I just disconnected these and I'm touching just the rubberized part. I'm not touching the actual metal uh, connectors on these things just because uh, all these batteries are going to have a pretty significant uh, charge behind them. Um, and I did have another good comment on the last video from a guy when I was asking, where should I tap this battery bank? Because this is, this is a new battery bank for me. 
Should I tap it at one end or in the middle? And I had somebody leave me a comment that was I thought was fantastic that when you have, because I have two in a series, because these are 12-volt batteries, two in a series to make 24, and the rest of them are parallel. Uh, and I, I, it didn't occur to me to do it this way, but that's probably the best way to do it, is you tap the ground on one end and the positive on the other. That way you're drawn through the whole battery bank all at one time. So I've got enough lead on my power, on my, on my positive side, so that when I go to reconnect this, I'm going to be putting that positive at the other end. So uh, let's, get these, let's get these things tested here. All right, guys, let's check out this first battery here. So right now, I got the negative and the positive connected properly. It's showing for a 12-volt battery. It's showing almost 13 volts, 12.7. So now this is a load test, okay? So let's do the load test. It's showing almost 13 volts fully charged, which is all the way up in the green. And green is good. So yellow's weak. Press the load switch, maximum of 10 seconds, read the meter. Well, what do the instructions say? It says, during the first use of this tester, you will notice a little smoke and or burning smell. <laughs> This will normally stop after a short burn-in period. So uh, also during the regular use, this housing right here will get hot. So don't touch it. Press the hold the switch for 10 seconds, read the meter with the lowest on, then refer to table one or the back of the tester. The back of the tester say. Here you go, battery analysis. Good green, battery capacity is okay. Doing this again, it's showing that it's all the way at the top of the green. And when I, load, when I put the load test on it, it stays in the green. I'm going to call this battery good. All right, this one is also showing clear up in the green. I put the load on it, and it stays in the green. This one is showing almost 13 volts, the same as the other one. I'm going to call this battery good. This one as well, almost 13 volts. Load test, stays in the green. Next one, 13 volts. Load test, stays in the green. So far, so good. Ah, this one shows that the battery is down here, not quite 13 volts. Oh, look at that. This battery is not showing almost 13 volts. It's, it's showing that the battery's in the green, but when I hit the load test, look what happens, guys. Blammo, way down in the weak, almost bad. I'm going to have to probably change out number five. Okay, let's test the other ones. This one is showing clear up here in the, okay, in the green. So this one's showing clear up here, guys. Clear up to 14 volts. So most of your batteries should be in the 13.7 range. Look at that. Needles clear up here in this green right here. And then I hit this. It, it's, it's way up here. I wonder, guys, if I had a bad connection between this battery. So number five right now is not a good battery. Number six is great. I wonder if the rest of these are going to be great. I wonder if this one was my, uh, my, my weak link. Okay, guys, I found four batteries that were bad. Number five, number seven, number nine, and 11. Thankfully, I've got four. Actually, I have five replacements. I'm going to replace these right now and uh, wire them all back up and see how this all, uh, how this works out. All right, guys, I've got these connected all up here. I've got my jumper between the two, making that 24-volt bank, another 24-volt bank. I've got all the positives connected in a series. And then this positive down here is going to connect to the inverter supply, which uh, goes to the generator and the inverter. And then the positive side to the, po to the, uh, uh, to the solar panels. But I've got to extend those. The other end is going to be my negative tap and I'm going to put that together right now with my negative in series uh, negative from the uh, inverter as well as well the negative for the inverter is actually um, all connected right there to that bus bar right there so I only need to make these two connections right here to finish this side right here so it's going to be the positive side that I have to extend which is going to be these two wires right here 
Okay, guys, when you guys are dealing with uh, with lots of voltage like this, even though it's only 24 volts, there's a lot of amperage behind that. Make sure that uh, you are just gra you're not grabbing the ends of that thing. Or you're not you're not touching the positive with the negative. So, <laughs> kind of goes without saying. I know electricity scares a lot of people, and yeah, it's not my favorite thing either. But uh, all right, so I've got the positive connected to the end of the 124 volt battery. All the positives are in a parallel to that end over there. And then I got the negative to that end over there, and those are all connected in parallel all the way down to that end right there. So I should be good to go. Set inverter. Inverter is off. I want to turn it on. Let's see. Yep, we got lights. We got power. All right, guys, so everything is hooked up. Everything's nice and tight. Now, these is not going to show anything because I have everything turned off outside, but I'm going to go out there and flip those suckers on right now. So both of these are showing blinking green lights, which means that uh, it is a charge control mode. So that means that these batteries are not, the new batteries are not topped off yet. So I've got to go out there and turn everything on. So, all right, let's see what my trimeric shows. It's showing 24.8. Of course, we're not getting any charge because I don't have my solar panels turned on yet. And it's showing that all those batteries are 100% full. So, oh, that's weird. I got nothing. I wonder if uh, I blew the fuse on my trimeric. I must have blown the fuse. Well, let me go down there and check that fuse. Well, my trimeric, it's all hooked up. I wonder if my fuse popped. It shows okay. It's kind of strange. Oh, we're back on, okay. I must've just joggled it and needed to have the, the wires wiggle a little bit, but it's showing 24.8 volts and 100%. Uh, and it's showing, I don't see down there it goes. I don't know why it's, I wonder, I wonder if the voltage is uh, just a little bit low. Hmm. Huh, interesting. Don't know why it's doing that. Well, I'm gonna go flip the solar panels on. All right, let's flip all these panels back on. Get some power going here. Huh. Trimeric's still not coming on. So I'm going to have to call the manufacturer and find out what's going on. The only thing different that I did with this battery bank, with the, I've got brand new batteries in there. The only thing different that I did was I changed where I tapped the whole battery bank from one end to the other. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let me get my battery tester and make sure I've got just 24 volts. I mean, the Trimeric shows 24 volts, but it's acting like I got something wired wrong. So... Let me make a call and uh, stand by. All right, guys, I've got my uh, tester in here set to 200 volts DC, and uh, it's showing 28.7 volts, guys. So that's showing 28.7 volts is in these batteries right now. So I know I have everything wired up right. For whatever reason, my trimeric is, uh, is acting up, and I'm not sure why. All right, guys, so I called the company and asked what was going on with that monitor. Yeah, I, big dummy. I fried the monitor. So I'm going to show you what I didn't do that I should have done. Uh, all right, let me show you. All right, guys, well, you saw me flip off all the breakers for the solar panels. This is the power coming in from the solar panels. I had no power going in here. I had turned off the inverter. So this thing wasn't drawing any power. There was no power coming in here. But these things are full of power. And right here on my monitor, there's a fuse. I forgot to take this fuse out and kill the power to the monitor when I went to hook this up. And so what happened is when I hooked up the negative lead over there, you guys saw the sparky. Sparky, I had a voltage surge from here through here. And it's only milliamps. But you would think that it would have blown the fuse. But it, it didn't blow the fuse. And there was enough of a voltage spike that it burned out that monitor. So, guys, uh, <laughs> I told you to disconnect everything. And I forgot to disconnect the monitor. And so, anyway, the new one's coming in the mail here in a couple of weeks. And, uh, 
And actually, it should be here in a couple of days. As soon as I get that, we will put that sucker in, and then we will uh, make sure this thing's all up, all uh, operating properly. But as of right now, it's all hooked up, nice and solid, nice new batteries to replace the four bad ones, and uh, it's inverting obviously because I've got power. So, guys, make sure you can disconnect everything. Uh, at some point, I'm going to put a breaker switch on these uh, the the input leads from my solar panels as well as the inverter. So all i got to do is throw a switch and then I can isolate these batteries. So that's the name of the game in power is isolating the power sources, which I thought I did, but I overlooked the, the little simple ones. So, uh, all right, next segment of this video will be installation. So, okay guys, I got the new Trimeric came. I did it priority mail, which was fantastic. And uh, so we're just gonna do an open, let's open this box up here. Yeah, this is fantastic, guys. Guys, this is Bogart Engineering, and I could not be happier with the uh, with the service that I had gotten from them. They uh, they were really on top of it. When you call them, they are really really good at uh, answering your questions and uh, helping you out with this thing. So very very patient. But these guys are a great company. So let's let's see what they gave us here. Looks like they gave us a package here with uh, an extra fuse holder, a couple of fuses, and some replacement screws. Okay, and this is supposed to replace my old one. The one I have is really, really old, apparently. And guys, you can it makes it really, really easy to buy this online. They make it really easy to cash out. It's pretty fantastic. So carefully get this bad boy open. And there we go. That's all it is, guys. And this is a direct replacement for the one that I have. So we're going to put this thing in right now. And it's meant to uh, replace the wires. Just take the wires off of the old one and put them on the uh, put them on this new one. So let's get her done. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go kill the power to this thing so I don't burn up my new trimeric. I'm going to take the fuse out of this bad boy. That way I don't get a, a voltage spike. And... Uh, I'm pretty confident that I can just use the same exact fuse that I had in here before, but uh, just to be safe, I am going to replace, I'm going to make sure that this is the same voltage uh, or amperage of fuse before I put the new one in. All right, let's see. These things are 250 volts. Looks like one amp. 250 volts says 10 amps. This is a one amp. This is a 10 amp. This might have been my problem right here. So here's the quick reference guide, and it tells you Everything that you need to know as far as how to program it. All right, it's in, but let's go put this new fuse on. Make sure that we have this done just like they, they say to do it. Guys, these pliers are amazing. They've got wire strippers here. They've got cutters in here, cutters right there. And this is the crimper right here with a little plier at the end. Man, I use these things all the time. I'll leave a link in the description for these. These are actually made by uh, Snap-on, but you can buy these. And they're awesome. All right, guys. <laughs> Here's the moment right here. <sighs> so with the one amp fuse in there, it should pop if something's done wrong. But I follow the instructions, and they say to wire it directly the same with the same color wires, the same way as the original one, because this is a direct replacement for the older model. So... Bogart Engineering is very thorough and they're awesome. Here we go. All right, we have power. Let's go see what it did. So we had full sun today and yesterday, so the batteries were definitely charged up. I, I couldn't tell, but I knew they would be. Uh, so Tuesday, Wednesday, I did this video. I started it on Tuesday, and we had uh, snow, a little bit of snow, and it was cloudy all day Wednesday. So we had, I didn't get any charge, and I didn't turn the generator on for two full days, and we had plenty of power. So I'm really, really excited to see how this turns out. So we'll uh, we'll do an update later on and show you guys how many days um, how how many days we can go without charging, without sun, or without putting the generator on. So stay tuned for that.